The rich keep on getting richer. Brad Stevens not only constructed an entire roster to go out and dominate the NBA, but he also made a very forgotten midseason trade to bring in Jaden Springer, but it is looking like it is going to pay off. Springer, in his first summer league game, went out and put up 23 points, 6 rebounds, 2 steals in just 24 minutes and showed all the signs of being a potential role player for this Celtics team next year. He's shown a great ability to be able to navigate the pick and roll. Great pass right there. Made Nemias Cueta look like a stud. Now his career 28% from three mark is not going to cut it in the NBA. But he was really getting wherever he wanted. Knocking down shots with ease. And that's not an easy pull up there over Kalel Ware for the Miami Heat. He went three for six from the three point line. So again, for a guy that's 28% from three on his career, that is a bit promising. Um, does have a little bit of a hitch in his jump shot, but... Sorry, he's got clamps on the other side of the ball, um, getting the steal right here after locking up Jaime Hulkes Jr., who is no slouch. And then he hits his fellow rookie and fellow bench piece next year, Baylor Shireman, for the three in transition. The Celtics have a whole lot of pieces. Watch him navigate this pick and roll right here. Coming off the screen from Cueta, he sees all this open area and just pulls up and knocks down the midi. Does the same thing here. Three level scoring. He showcased his ability to do that in the summer league this year. Refuses the ball screen, gets to the three-point line. This was a crazy shot, but it went in. Um, he was out there hooping. Refuses the ball screen once again. Thought he was going to put him on a poster, but still gets the layup to go. That's a, that's a tough tough finish right there. Uh, Jaden Springer looked really, really good. Here he is locking up Jaime Hulkes Jr. once again. And once again, that is one of the best rookies in the NBA last year who probably shouldn't be playing summer league. And Jaden Springer just took it from him. Now, I know he's not a point guard, but still. That is cookies. Now, he definitely won't be starting anytime soon as the big five are all locked up. The bench is also locked up once again for next year. But there have been some big extensions handed out, so they need to find value pieces on the bench, and those will come in draft picks, first-round picks, second-round picks. We'll talk later about what they have still. Um, but what they do have here is an elite scheme that Brad Stevens and Coach Joe Mazzulla have been able to put together, and I think Jaden Springer as well as Baylor Shireman can fit into this very well. I see Jaden Springer, maybe, or obviously not quite as good as Drew Holiday, but a guy that can play that Drew Holiday role. Watch Drew right here. Slip the ball screen, and then he's going to finish the layup inside the paint, and it's all made possible because of their five-out system. Um, Drew Holiday is just a winning player. He can guard the one through five. You see him right here guarding Julius Randle, and then the next play, he'll switch on to uh, Jalen Brunson and lock that up from beyond the three-point arc. He averaged 19 points per game, seven assists, five rebounds, and was two-time all-defensive first team in Milwaukee. People forget how good he is on the offensive side of the ball, but he came to Boston and he was the fifth option. He guards the one through five. Here he is locking up Carl Anthony Towns. Cookies from behind. They love to do this, putting Drew on a big and then letting KP play Romer. As you can see here, he's guarding Tobias Harris, so he's able to help off. Um, that gets Embiid's attention, and Drew is able to come back from behind and swipe it out. And then they get on the break, and he's going down to give it to Jalen to finish the dunk. Very nice stuff there. Once again, guarding Embiid. Questionable shot selection, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, another stop there. Now, the five-out system is absolutely broken. They hit Al Horford there, and then this is beautiful basketball. All these clips are from the finals. Finding Jalen Brown sliding in behind him is because Maxi Kleber has to help. P.J. Washington has to help down. And then Jalen Brown just cuts right in front of his face because, uh, well, Luke is kind of lost defensively once again. And easy dunk there for Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown has been so, so good. Um, probably should be on the Olympic team. There's some drama about that right now. But that's the only thing that can break the Celtics team up is drama outside the court. Nobody on the court can stop him. And nobody can really stop Jalen Brown either. He is probably going to drive. Tyler Hero knows this, so he's sitting on it. And then he just pulls up from three, makes Tyler Hero almost fall down. That is that is very tough right there, especially if he's hitting sidestep threes, fading away into the corner. That's almost unguardable. Um, he's good off the catch and shoot, and he is relentless in the paint. Um, very quick second jump, which helps him get a lot of offensive rebounds if he misses it. Um, and then once again, you, if you close out on him, you think he's going to drive either way, gives you a pump fake, and then you, your hand goes down and he goes right back up over you as he did in the case of Spencer Dinwiddie right here. Transition nightmare as well. Had to put this in here. He is a dog getting downhill. Uh, very, very hard to stop. One of the best athletes in the NBA and then just posterizes the four time defensive player of the year get up top Rudy Gobert 
goodness. What makes this offense so special is that you have to have five elite perimeter defenders because all five of these guys can put pressure on you with the drive, especially Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They are a walking paint touch every time they touch the ball. And if you've got a guy like Daniel Gafford or Luka Doncic trying to guard them, it's going to put the rest of the defense in a very, very bad spot. It's not going to work out most times. And Jason Tatum gets a lot of flack, but he is really, really good. Um, people need to stop hating on JT. The man is a monster. Great passer as well. He doesn't get enough credit for that. And when he gets going downhill, he is almost impossible to stop. I mean, watch this one right here. A little jab step spin move on Daniel Tice's head. I guess that wasn't even a jab step. That was one dribble spin move on Daniel Tice's head. Here he goes again, coming off the screen. The five-out system working very well right there. Drew Holiday, I believe, hits him back door for the dunk. Um, very good stuff from Jason Tatum. He is, he doesn't get enough credit. Everybody hates on him. I think he's one of the best players. Maybe top 10 in the NBA. We'll see. Y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But, I mean, then they got guys like Derek White and Drew Holiday that are knocking down threes. Hitting Jason Tatum right there. Like I said, they got four guards essentially that can all penetrate, can all get a paint touch and kick. It's a drive and kick offense, and it works to perfection. I mean, that, that's a crazy shot by the fourth option right there, Derek White. Um, the bench has no slouch either with Peyton Pritchard, with Al Horford, Sam Hauser, and then, of course, they're adding Baylor Shireman. Maybe Jaden Springer and Amias Cueta can get in on the action. But uh, Shireman hit 110 threes last year in 35 games played, which would be on pace for 254 over the course of an NBA season, which that got him 12th in Division One basketball in terms of threes made. He's got a very nice back-to-the-basket game as well once he gets into the paint at six foot six. but he averaged 18.5 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists in 37 minutes per game last year for the Creighton Blue Jays. So definitely a guy with a lot of potential to be a really nice role player for Boston, 45% shooting from the field, 38% from three on 8.3 attempts. Shout out to Baylor Shireman. Now, if you have gotten this far into the video, obviously you like something. So make sure to the like button. Leave me a comment down below and hit that subscribe button. As you can see here, a large majority of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if that is you, go ahead and fix that right now. And with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on here looking at the finals MVP himself. Brad Stevens, um, <laughs> the man himself, he constructed a beautiful roster, and he doesn't get enough credit for it. Um, bringing in Drew Holiday for Malcolm Brogdon and Robert Williams, as well as a first-round pick he acquired in the uh, Christoph Porzingis trade. Bringing in Derek White for Romeo Langford, Josh Richardson in a first. Great stuff there. Bringing in Al Horford for a retired player, unfortunately. Um, and then <laughs> bringing in Christoph Porzingis and two first-round picks for Marcus Smart and Danilo Gallinari. Big-time stuff from Brad Stevens right there. And then he goes out and extends the whole roster. Everybody is back next year. Jason Tatum, five years, $315 million. Um, The only guy that's not back after this coming season will be Sam Hauser, and they just drafted Baylor Shireman to, I'd assume, be his heir apparent because they're not going to be able to pay Sam Hauser unless he takes a pay cut. But four years, $126 million for Derek White. Big-time extension right there. Brad Stevens has been cooking. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like button and hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy it at any point. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.